mistake by this man, a ring about song. And Manchester United underlining again that you cannot afford to give the ball away in this fashion to them. Quickly punished. Stuart Pearce has had it again, Song caught napping, and Solskjaer unerring with that shot. He's having an extremely good holiday period. Ole got a Solskjaer. Two goals against Ipswich. The winner at Aston Villa. And now this one on New Year's. Quest going on. And certainly worth another look, but Philip Neville might claim this. Does it get a touch from anyone else? Yet Stuart Pearce just. Well, that one might go to the Premier League jury because I'm sure Philip Neville might claim that because it didn't really deflect too much off Stuart Pearce's toe, did it? Be a bit harsh to call that an own goal. But it's 2-0. Just play it short, Keane whips it in with speed, and York, well, was he offside is the only question there. It was close. A lovely ball in. And York comes up with his sixth goal of the season. 3-1. Now, does that change the mood at all? His scoring streak goes on. Simple goal, really. Bartes came and then didn't really claim the ball. And Canute with the glancing header. Got up very well, didn't he? And Philip Neville couldn't keep it out. It was across the line by the touch. And there is no stopping Ipswich Town, it seems. What a start for the side from Suffolk. It's Julio Arca! Oh! Breathtaking! Arca equalises for Sunderland with a quite fantastic free kick. The execution was excellent. And it's 1-1. Phillips. Oh, and Hutchison. And Phillips! Fired over by Kevin Phillips. He's onside, and Richard Wright spread himself. But Dickie really should have buried that, surely. Quaddock. Dickie flipped it on, and Phillips is through! He doesn't miss those. Just in case you hadn't noticed, Kevin Phillips is getting back to his best. Quinn to flick it on today, but Dickio was there offering that particular service. Emerson Tom towards Hutchison. Now Phillips trying to get away from Venus. He has done so, and Phillips fights Dickio! And it works the other way around this time. Phillips the provider, Dickio the scorer. Sunderland unbeatable at home. Ah, oh, 3 1 up. Ray Hutchison. And Ray again. Still in the hunt. And it comes to Stefan Schwartz. Sunderland have another. Sunderland's season is getting better and better. Smitsa. Gerard. He's proven already he can shoot. Oh, can he shoot? Can he shoot? He says to the crowd, did you see that? Because the goalkeeper didn't. Stephen Gerard. It's a player who's emerging 
in the very, very top draw. Look at that for a goal. The goalkeeper did see it. He did have a view of it. But it was just the speed of the shot which deceived Paul Jones. Lindbergh Bronk. From uh, set pieces, Southampton have been deadly this season. They've scored more goals from crosses than anyone else. He drops to Solvet. Oh, he sneaks it in. Tron Solvet has an excellent record against Liverpool. His last Premiership goal was against them. He also scored in the league of the Worthington Cup against them, and he's drawn Southampton level. He celebrates what was a soft goal for Liverpool to concede. One of their strikers is the farthest man back. It's been a full team effort today from Glenn Hoddle's boys. Alistair keeps it away from the goalkeeper. Yeah, it's in! It's in! Marcus Babel! Well, that's ironic because Babel has an injury and probably wouldn't have been on the field had Gerard Houllier been able to substitute him. But the right place at the right time with five minutes to go. A huge psychological blow to Southampton. There may be one word to describe what you thought may have been a penalty. You may use stronger words than that. Well, I mean, how on earth the referee didn't see it? And if he didn't see it, the referee's assistant. I think any, you know, the viewers that are going to watch that are going to see how hard done by we've been. Because uh, that would have put us 2-1 up at a time when we were sort of, you know, on the defensive. But, um, I don't know, you know, I just scratched my head to to come to some sort of uh, understanding of why that hasn't been given. So it looked like a push in the back for, uh, of Seth and Henshaw, you know. And, and over the season, I think it's one of the situations you might, you might get that one at home. You don't, you don't really get them on your travel. It's ludicrous that we've played our third game in six days, you know. Uh, this is our, our second game in three days. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous, you know. If you're going to play during Christmas and New Year, fine. but you know, do it over normal circumstances. We shouldn't have it, haven't been, you know, play, playing matches like this back to back. I think, you know, them days are gone. Um, really, we should be like, in the rest of Europe, feet up for a couple of weeks or whatever. Um, you know, they, they must think we're absolutely mad the way we, uh, we do our, we structure our football. So the chase is still on as Liverpool does enough to maintain their challenge at the top. Chelsea and Aston Villa can only look on with envy. The Blues and the Villains are two massive clubs with highly ambitious chairmen, and yet together they've spent the season underachieving. To be taken seriously at home and in Europe, both teams must make a push to the top five and have a good cup run or expect heads to roll after the season. Line them up. Young Italian Carlo Cudicini has taken... Couldn't hit the target. quality. And a terrible mistake by James. Hasselbank! It is just cleared off the line. The referee's assistant has given it. And it is 1-0 to Chelsea. A terrible mistake by David James. At fault in the FA Cup final against Chelsea. At fault against Chelsea again in the Premiership. Well, James had kept his side level at nil there with one fine save from Poyet. But that was as bad a clearance as you could wish to see. For those, a difficult ball for Hasselbank to try and control. He just did enough to flick the ball towards goal. And despite the late efforts of Southgate, the referee's assistant, who was well placed, judged that the ball had crossed the line. To turn it over. Now that's better from Bartlett. Johansson from the flick by his striking partner. Put forward though by Stepanov. The game just spread for a moment. Kanu, can Arsenal take advantage of that with Parler coming in from the right-hand side? Fine try by Ray Parler. Turned aside by Kylie. Just when Charlton uh, were looking to put together a threatening piece of play at the other end. Parker, nicely delivered to the feet of Bartlett. Tishishev. Came off the Grimondi's head, Stewart. And headed in by the man in form, Jonathan Johansson. 
Well, Kishishev tossed it in. Grimondi's attempt to head clear wasn't decisive. Back by Stewart. Can he get the shot in? That's why they were so keen to get him twisted and turned his way into a good goal-scoring opportunity from some way out. Two defenders left trailing. I think that's three if you include Ekiog. Keane. Paduka. Keane has continued to run beyond the Australian who lost possession of the ball. Oh, through the centre goes Boxic. He's onside. First chance of the game. Oh, magnificently taken. It's clinical counter-attacking stuff from Middlesbrough to delight Terry Venables. They've not had a shot on goal. They have now, though. Duka. Dakor. Keane left it. The ball was facing goal. For Duka. Oh, Pills for handball. Penalty. Curtis Fleming. Ball certainly hit arm. Quite how intentional it was. We'll find out now, maybe. A little harsh, I felt. And it's Robbie Keane who scores. The first they hope of many such celebrations at Ellen Road. A first Leeds goal for Robbie Keane and a first goal against for Terry Venables. Ferdinand. Yorks header away, 